Frontend and Backend. Those are two parts of almost every website. Frontend, also called as client side, covers all the visual stuff, all the styling, positioning of the elements, animation effects. While the backend, known as server side, has all the hidden functionality and where all the data is managed and served. So if you have an account in Facebook, Twitter or Amazon, your activity, history, profile, your orders and much much more are saved and handled in the backend. Let's look at the example of the fast food drive through restaurant. So you go to this fast food restaurant you love and you see the menu stand. Of course, there is food and drinks presented and much nicer compared to the ones you get. Blech. So these pictures, prices, descriptions on that menu, we can call the front end or in other term that we already know, client side. All this static stuff you can create on your website using HTML, CSS and if needed, JavaScript. The back end in this story, as you may already guessed, is the kitchen chef and kitchen equipment. Both are hidden from the customer. The chef receives the order from the drive through operator, and then he can proceed with the request. drive through operator in our story works as the server, which helps the front end to communicate with the back end. So, since we already figured out how the front end and the back end works, let's go ahead and take a look at this in a more practical way. Let's say you are using Airbnb website and you found a beautiful place to stay during your planned travel and you press the reserve button. So, what happens in the background? After the reserve button is clicked, computer sends the request to the server. The server receives request from your computer in a URL form. Server reads the information of the URL and processes the request to the database. The database completes the request and sends back the response to the server. And the server sends back the response to the user, which the user usually can easily understand. Let's see what typical URL looks like. URL stands for Uniform Resource Locator. At the beginning of the URL we can see protocol. The protocol declares how a browser should communicate with a web server when sending or fetching a web page or document. URLs occur most commonly to reference web pages with HTTP, HTTPS, but are also used for file transfer with FTP or email which is mail too and many other applications. Second one is a host, or also called the domain name. This is the unique reference to a web page. Each server has its own particular domain name, such as YouTube, Google, Facebook, or any other website that you know. Next one is the path, which refers to a file or location on the server. So it tells the server what a user wants, like if the user is on the YouTube website and wants to know more about YouTube Premium or go to a game page. Then there is a query, which consists of a question mark followed by parameters. Its syntax is not well defined, but by convention is most often a sequence of key, value, pairs separated by a delimiter. URL alone is not enough for the server to understand what the user wants, so the action, also known as a request method, is passed along with the URL. There are four most known request methods that are used. So our example with Airbnb reservation, we can retrieve reservation with get, create new reservation with post method, with put method we can update reservation, and with delete method we can request to remove reservation. Now by combining the action and the path, the server can find the correct function that needs to be run. Also, that action and path, get reservation, post reservation, are naming conventions which are called REST, representational state transfer. And the whole list of the action types that are allowed in the server is called API, 
which stands for Application Programming Interface. Till now we covered a lot, but let's find out which background programming languages are the most popular nowadays. JavaScript is undoubtedly a leader of backend languages. It has been the most popular language for 10 years in a row, with over 65% of developers using it. JavaScript is used widely in front-end development, but in recent years is used for back-end development too. Node.js, which is a JavaScript runtime, makes that possible by providing back-end functionality. Python, the language is pretty easy to learn and comes along with one of the best backend frameworks called Django, which is secure, stable, fast and scalable. PHP is an open source backend programming language created back in 1994. Despite the fact it's one of the oldest languages in the pool, it has been frequently improved and updated and now it's one of the most flexible and easy to learn languages. Golang, also called Go, is a fast-growing programming language designed by Google. Although it's still a quite young language, it already reached the top 10 most loved programming languages in 2022. C Sharp is a general purpose language created by Microsoft back in 2001. It is based on C and C++ programming languages, so it's easier to learn it when you already have a basic understanding of those languages. To use only those backend programming languages to create these servers would be a total waste of time. There comes to the rescue backend frameworks and package managers. So it's a lot less code and much easier to write and obviously it saves your time. Most popular backend frameworks would be Laravel for PHP, Django for Python, Express.js for JavaScript, and Ruby on Rails. Now what about package managers? A package manager keeps track of what software is installed on your computer and allows you to easily install new software, upgrade software to newer versions, or remove software that you previously installed. So the packages will help to communicate with the database, do calculations, will help setting up login and authentications, and much more. And finally, let's move on to the databases. A database is information that is set up for easy access, management, and updating. What are the most used databases? It's Oracle, MySQL, Microsoft SQL Server, PostgreSQL, and MongoDB. Each of them have their pros and cons, so it's totally up to you which one is the best for your project. So that would be a brief overview of the backend, and I hope you enjoyed the video and now you understand much more on how the backend works and what the main technologies are. If you like this video, please do not by any means forget to subscribe and have joyful further learning. See ya!